Jackie Weaver, and I'm an Associate Professor of Art and Co-Chair of the Art Department at College of DuPage. Um, I teach classes like digital art, time-based media, some field study classes like art in Chicago, um, and special topics classes like this spring I'm teaching an art and environment class. And that class kind of relates to some of the things that I'm thinking about in my work. Uh, I tend to work on projects over several years. So the most recent project is called The Poisoned Well, and it's looking at drinking water quality in the U.S. And when we think about this, the first thing that pops into our head is usually Flint, Michigan, and thinking about the devastation caused there by the lead, the amount of lead in the drinking water. So when I moved to my apartment in Oak Park, I remember turning on the tap in this burst of brown, really gross water uh, just came shooting out of the faucet. And it wasn't the first time in my life that I have seen this sort of thing. I remember um, where we grew up, we had to be really careful about like not buying white things or using white things because there was a good chance that the rust in the water would um, ruin ruin the clothes in, in the washing machine. Uh, I also have a really distinct memory of the smell of the water fountain uh, at the school I went to when I was growing up. So this like smell of iron. So when I moved into this new apartment and saw that like that little burst of gross water uh, wasn't just a one-time thing. I started collecting samples and educating myself a little bit more about what could be in the water. So um, I got some different types of testing kits. Uh, I started thinking about water filtration systems, looking at which ones were effective or not effective, but just kind of religiously collecting these samples. Um, and I was keeping them in my refrigerator for a while because I was like, I could use these, I could make art with this. Uh, but then they kind of became too many and um, I started storing them in my freezer to get a little bit more space. Uh, and then I started melting the samples. So I kind of stretched these paper canvases and would put the um, ice, the uh, frozen water sample on the canvas and as it dried it would like spread out and leave behind all of these different mineral deposits to create these really organic looking prints. So uh, last year I applied for a couple of grants for community projects um, in upstate New York where I'm from. So my husband and I started working on um, creating kind of like this mobile water testing lab um, as part of a show at Opaka Gallery on infrastructure. Um, so we put together hundreds of these little test packets that we could pass out to people, that we could bring to students. Um, and we also created this little informational zine that went along with it that explained the different things we were testing for, um, affordable types of testing, and then uh, a little bit about the different types of uh, filtration and mediation for these different contaminants. We were also particularly interested in water quality in schools and because I had such a large network of art teacher friends, whether they were former students or former classmates, um, we were able to collect a lot of different samples from the schools around there and this was a way for those teachers to have conversations with their students, their fellow teachers, their administrators about the water quality in the schools, also in their homes, in their communities. Really I was just collecting these samples wherever in, in the world, wherever in the country I went, um, including Flint, Michigan, cataloging them. Um, sometimes I was storing them in labeled test tubes, sometimes I was um, melting them on transparencies so that rather than like looking through a microscope at these uh, samples you could put them on an old school transparency projector and project them really large and look at them on the wall and created like this little archive that uh, people in the gallery could come through and layer these different samples on top of each other 
try to find a sample from the town that they lived in. They could bring samples of their own water in as well. So there was kind of like this makeshift type of lab um, in, in the gallery space. My grandmother, who has lived on a farm for most of her life, has definitely been affected by water quality issues. So when you think about the pesticides kind of just pouring off into the water table in these agricultural and rural areas or the pesticides that are blanketing the crop, the crops, um, like there is a serious problem with that. And the book Silent Spring by Rachel Carson came out in the 60s as an early warning about what was happening with these chemicals and pesticides in these rural areas in particular. Um, but it wasn't a message that was really heard or received right away. So there was this this damage to the earth, to the water table, but also to um, many people's bodies. Near my grandmother's farm, um, there was also this company who was coming up and dumping loads of toxic waste near her farm for years before um, the EPA was notified on and did anything about it. So they were drinking the water the whole time this was happening. And my grandmother has been battling cancers, cancer, yeah, multiple kinds of cancer um, for years now. Uh, and my mom remembers walking down the street and like thinking about, oh, somebody in that house has cancer. Like almost every home on the street in these different rural areas near her home, um, she could identify at least one person who had cancer in that. Um, family. So like really thinking about how these contaminants were present for such a long time and, and nobody really thought much about it. Nobody knew to test. Usually I'm creating work for a space like I did for the alpaca gallery where I was creating that lab for, for a particular space. Now that I don't have a particular space um, to work with, I have been uh, taking some of the metal and mineral deposit samples that I had collected from my home and uh, mixing them back in with some water to create these watercolor paintings. Uh, and the paintings are aerial views of mines in the U.S. Just kind of using Google Maps to kind of scan these different areas. And from those aerial views, they kind of look like these gouges in the earth with like these different patterns and striations. And when I made the first painting, it really reminded me of this series I had done about 10 years ago about scars and healing. Um, so I was thinking about the scars that these industries leave on the earth, um, but also those scars that they leave on and inside of our body. So that's what I'm thinking about right now. Thinking about viewers for this work, I've always been interested in creating kind of a seductive, image that has some level of beauty in it but um, upon closer inspection there's something really sinister present present so there's an interesting kind of tension there for me so here I think people are interested looking at some of the prints the kind of swirling organic qualities to them but then you know realizing that oh this is made with stuff that is coming out of the tap um, which is a bit horrifying. Uh, so a huge part of this is about like raising those questions, raising interest for people to be um, wanting to be more educated about what is in their wa water quality, um, what those different contaminants are, what they do, how to f filter them. Um, and I, I wish that my grandmother and her neighbors had had this kind of information, had known to look for these things. Um, and I wonder what a difference that would have made for them. So that's what I'm thinking about right now. Thanks for listening.